Actually, it's a bit strange for a woman your age to live with her parents. It's better to be independent. Independent. My sister-in-law, who spoke as if preaching about being independent, probably never imagined that the word independent she used would be thrown back at her. My name is Amy. With the slogan work is the best partner I am a 35-year-old enjoying single life. I had a boyfriend in my 20s, but I somehow ended up single at this age. Well, it's not that I have completely given up on marriage. In such a situation, I live at my parents' house. Work is going well, and my parents are healthy and well. I am living peacefully every day without any dissatisfaction or anxiety, but there are people who persistently criticize me. How long do you plan to stay single, Amy? Huh, of course I'll get married if there's a chance, but right now I'm fulfilled with my work. She laughed sarcastically at my answer. You say work is fun as an excuse to comfort your lonely self because you can't get married. Poor thing. Those who can't get married escape from reality by immersing themselves in work. What's so pitiful? The one who despises me being single is my sister-in-law, Susan. She thinks that married people superior and more noble than those who are single. My brother, three years older than me, got married just a year ago. I vividly remember the day my sister-in-law first visited our house. Ha, huh, Amy, you're 34 and still don't have a boyfriend. Are you okay? Have you ever had a boyfriend before? If you'd like, shall I introduce you to my friend? He's a bit quirky, though. At your age, you might need to compromise a bit, right? Otherwise, you might miss the right time. I never thought I would be subjected to such rude words the first time I met her. Yes, well was the only dumb response I could muster. My sister-in-law is the same age as me. Unlike me, she seems to be the type who brags about being married. From the beginning, she showed an attitude of trying to be superior. She is also very insensitive. She looked up my company's income on the internet and asked intrusive questions like, foreign companies pay well, right? How much do you earn? How much is your bonus, Amy? You must be saving quite a bit, right? Even though she's my sister-in-law, she has no right to say such things. I'd rather avoid that topic. I skillfully diverted the conversation and got through the situation. If I showed signs of refusal silently, she would probably not force the issue, but my sister-in-law was more oblivious to those around her than I expected. It felt almost as if she were an alien. Why avoid it? You can tell me about your salary, right? Um, usually, one does not share such information with others. Really? But I want to know. Please tell me. When I sighed and asked, Why do you want to know so much? She calmly replied. Why is it wrong to understand my sister-in-law's financial situation? I can't understand why she seeks such information. It seems we have different values. Feeling this, I had been keeping my distance from her. Even so, Susan's insensitivity went beyond normal bounds. One day on a holiday, she showed up at my parents' house and said, You know, Amy, I found this in your room before waving my pay slip around. She probably visited my house on a day I was away and searched my room. Since my parents' living area is on the first floor and my room is on the second floor, my parents didn't notice her going upstairs. However, this behavior was like that of a thief. Ha! Huh, what are you doing? Amy, you earn a high salary, don't you? Why were you hiding it? More importantly, it's very rude to enter someone's room without permission, isn't it? It's because you've been keeping your income a secret. If you were earning more, you could have increased your wedding gift. The amount you gave was too little. Isn't $1,000 enough? What kind of person is this? On top of being insensitive, her obsession with money is serious. Angered, I spoke harshly to my sister-in-law for the first time. You are, after all, just my sister-in-law. There are things I don't want to discuss and things I want to keep secret. Please don't pry into my personal matters. 
Even though we are related by marriage, she didn't like being criticized from a younger sister's position. Her face turned red with anger, and she snapped, What did you say? I don't want to be told something like that by a single and cheeky person like you and stormed off, snorting. What are the disadvantages of being single? I just want to be left alone. I should be the one who's angry, but maybe I went too far. I thought she would refrain from insensitive behavior from then on. However, since then, her criticism of me only increased. Single people are a burden on society. If you get married and have children, you would contribute to the society's future, but remaining single brings no benefit. There are many selfish and self-centered people. She began to criticize me in front of our family and relatives. From her previous belief that married people are superior, she shifted to attacking single people. My parents also protested against these words. I don't think such prejudice is appropriate. Whether married or unmarried, each person should be respected as an individual. That's right. I'm working hard and contributing to society I countered my sister-in-law. However, she did not seem convinced. What are you talking about? I'm both married and working part-time, so I contribute to society more than you. My parents and I couldn't help but laugh at her statement. At that time, it was discovered that termites had infested the interior walls of the house. The house was over 40 years old and had some signs of aging, but until recently, we managed to live there by repairing it as necessary. However, the termite issue was something we could not overlook. We were considering extermination, but there was a risk of recurrence even if we did so immediately and there were doubts about the value of investing in a 40-year-old house. At that time, I proposed an idea. Shall we sell this house and find a new ready-built home? I had lived modestly at my parents' house and had managed to save a decent amount, but buying a new ready-built house might be a bit risky, right? My father was worried, but I reassured him by saying, it's fine, I'm 35 and can afford to buy a house on my own and decided to purchase it in my name. I had informed my brother about the deteriorating condition of the house and the move to a new home. He initially asked if he could inherit the family home, but when he learned that repairs would cost over $10,000, he said, ah, then I don't need it and back down. We completed the purchase of the new ready-built home and moved in with my parents to start a new life. While we were still unpacking, my brother and his wife visited us. Wow, it's quite spacious. It's a two-story house with rooms for kids, and there's a garden too. Wonderful. At first I thought it was a congratulatory visit, but that wasn't actually the case. I have something to tell you. I'm pregnant. Surprised by the happy news, my parents and I offered our congratulations. Congratulations. Take care of yourself. It's your first childbirth, so it might be tough, right? Feel free to consult us if you need anything. My father and mother were excited about their first grandchild. Thank you. In that case, we'll also live here from now on. What? We were stunned by the sudden proposal to live together. Hmm. That's too sudden. I'm sorry, but there just isn't enough room in the house for that. Yes, it's impossible for six people to live here. My parents barely managed to express their refusal. That's not true. If the unmarried woman here leaves, all problems will be solved. After uttering those words, my sister-in-law glanced at me with a sense of superiority. Are you talking about me? Yes, you insensitive woman. Isn't it embarrassing to be dependent on your parents at your age, just enjoying the convenient parts while burdening your elderly parents with everything? We have an important role to fulfill in having an heir. You're in the way, so I want you to leave the house soon. My sister-in-law crossed her arms and glared at me with malice. Actually, it's a bit strange for a woman your age to live with her parents. It's better to be independent independent. My sister-in-law kept preaching. My brother also agreed, saying, you can't depend on our parents forever. As your brother thinking about your future, 
I also think you should become independent and start a new life. What an unreasonable couple. Actually, this house is. Just as I was about to reveal the ownership, my father spoke up first. I see. So you two are going to move in here. My sister-in-law replied contentedly, Yes, and we will take good care of you both in the future, father-in-law. But it won't be for free. Shall we have you pay a proper rent? What? Rent? Dad, are you really going to take money from your children? My brother exclaimed in surprise. You were the one talking about being independent, so naturally you should pay rent. The going rate in this area is about $800. $800 my brother and his wife were shocked. But my father explained, even then, renting a detached house in this area would be much more expensive. Plus, it's near the station and the land is valuable. Shocked by such an amount, my brother and his wife couldn't back down after claiming we should all be independent. Isn't that a bit high? I can't see the advantage of living together like this my sister-in-law muttered quietly, clearly audible for all to hear. Well, we'll manage somehow. The upper floor will be our living space. That settles it then. Amy, please move out as soon as possible. You're a nuisance. Declaring this, my brother and his wife smugly went upstairs. Wonderful. Such a spacious area and plenty of storage. It was good to drive that person out. Right. The nuisance is gone and eventually this house will be mine. Everything is going smoothly. They spoke loudly, seemingly enjoying themselves. But my parents and I exchanged glances and quietly nodded. Do they really think they can enjoy living like this? They are blissfully unaware of the circumstances. The fact that this house is in my name was kept secret by my father for future plans. After being driven out, I moved to a short-stay apartment and lived leisurely. Then one day, I received a call from my sister-in-law. Um, I can't find your parents. Their belongings are gone. Did you take them in out of consideration? No, my parents left on their own and came to my place. I confidently conveyed this. My parents were relaxing in front of me, enjoying their coffee. Oh, that was the case, huh? Well, that's good too. Being pregnant and living together can be tiring, so it helps. Forgetting the help they received by living together. Why would she say such a thing? You'll soon be without that luxury, so be prepared. So from next month, the rent will be $1,600, please. What? So that rent, all of it, please. Ha! What are you talking about? Well, you and your husband were sharing the rent with our parents, right? Now that they have left, it's only natural for you who are living there to bear all the costs, isn't it? My sister-in-law still didn't seem to understand the situation. How can you say such things so arrogantly? That house belongs to your father, right? What are you talking about? The house is in my name. What? A moment of silence flowed between us. I decided to explain the situation again. It seems you do not understand, so let me explain. I am the owner of the house and I paid all the expenses for its purchase. Until yesterday, my parents were living with you and your husband and I was receiving $800 from each, totaling $1,600 in rent. However, now that they have left the house, with only you and my brother are living there. Therefore, from next month, you will need to pay the full rent of $1,600. This is why my father stopped me when I was about to claim ownership of the house. He had secretly been planning to correct my brother and his wife's irresponsible remarks. I haven't heard about this. Then, they should come back and stay here. This is absurd. Surprised by the rent amount of $1,600, my sister-in-law became flustered and spoke in a disturbed manner. Did I make a mistake? But you were the one who urged me to be independent, right? Living with parents is proof of not being independent, isn't it? 
I continued the conversation by pointing out the irony in her behavior. If a couple only bears half of their financial responsibilities, they are not considered independent. That's why my parents decided to leave this house on their own. That's not what I meant. I really appreciate my parents. They actually teach me to stand on my own. So please make sure to pay the rent of $1,600 from next month. Wait a moment. I hung up the phone without waiting for a response. A few hours later, my brother called. Hey, what's with the ownership and rent talk? Isn't that totally unreasonable? Why are you being so selfish? Selfish? That's my line. Who intruded into a house bought by someone else and complained until the owner was driven out? Who was it that unreasonably used becoming independent as an excuse? My brother had nothing to reply. Anyway, if you can't make the payment, could you please move out? I don't want someone who can't pay the rent living there. Wait, we are having a child soon, and if it's $800, Dollars will pay, so let us stay. Are you really having a child? Your stomach doesn't seem to have grown at all yet. What? According to my mother, my sister-in-law was supposedly six months pregnant, but her belly was still flat. Could it be? A lie. My brother's silence was as good as an admission. I will consider legal action, so please move out soon. Visibly frightened by my words, my brother replied, Okay, we'll move out soon and ended the call. When my parents confronted my sister-in-law, she immediately admitted that her pregnancy was a lie. I thought if I said I was having a baby, you all would treat me a little better. Both father-in-law and mother-in-law always favor Amy over me. However, my parents were not cold to my sister-in-law. My father, maintaining an appropriate distance, merely admonished my arrogant sister-in-law as a person. She had faked the pregnancy without understanding his intentions. Perhaps she really is an alien. Afterward, my brother and his wife left the house and decided to rent an apartment in a new location. As the peak of the moving season in early spring approached, the costs associated with the move exceeded expectations and turned out to be quite high. Typically, significant initial costs, including security deposits and prepaid rent, are required when renting a new place. Despite this, my plan less brother and his wife, having saved no money, repeatedly visited my parents' home seeking financial assistance, but my parents resolutely refused. My father, stern yet fair, stated, It is time for you to be independent. I do not wish to associate with those who lack discernment. This incident led my parents to decide to further distance themselves from my brother and his wife. With no financial aid from my parents and difficulty in securing loans from banks, my brother and his wife were pushed into a financially difficult situation. Having once emphasized the importance of being independent, they now faced a situation where they needed to improve their circumstances without parental help. I am curious not just out of interest, but also to see how they would manage achieving being independent on their own. Meanwhile, my father also had deep concerns about my future. Amy, I believe you are a capable, independent woman. However, perhaps out of selfishness as your parents, why don't you try an arranged marriage just once he suggested? We have found a suitable match for you. It's our friend's son. Why don't you meet him once my parents surprisingly suggested an arranged marriage for someone like me? What are you saying, Amy? You are always my pride, my father said. Dad, I am always grateful to you. Both your mother and I, he added, tapping my head affectionately. Significant turning points in life often hide in unexpected places. Shall we try your first arranged marriage then? With these thoughts, I felt a positive anticipation about new encounters. A lazy wife who neglects her chores like this should leave the house. My mother-in-law said, I am being blamed. My mother-in-law looked at me with a stern gaze. My sister-in-law said, I will take care of mom and Scott, so you are not needed here. 
You always look so tired and gloomy. My sister-in-law, who does no household work at all, said this with a look of disdain. Wait, Scott, your mother and sister are too cruel. I've always. I sought help from my husband, but he too spoke with contempt. Just as mom and sister said, a wife who is only focused on work and cannot do household chores is of no use. Besides, I'm now in a good relationship with a young part-timer, so you are no longer needed. Pack your things and leave quickly. I was stunned while the three of them cast at me to get out of the house. While listening to their words, I looked down and clenched my fists tightly. Still, I tried to remain as calm as possible and said understood. I will leave. The downfall of the family that has always put everything on me is about to begin. My name is Kristen. I am 32 years old, working at a company while taking care of my family. Nowadays, most women continue to work after marriage, and since I'm passionate about my job, I have continued to work at the company I joined as a new graduate. During a busy morning preparation, my husband started a conversation. Hey Kristen, can you take care of this? The deadline for the tax return is approaching. He handed me a pile of bills and receipts. Again? I wish you'd handle your own shop's accounts. I replied seriously, but Scott averted his gaze. You know I'm not good at this kind of detailed work, right? You're always a big help, thank you. Scott and I got married five years ago. He was working at a restaurant I frequented, and our conversation there led to us getting along. As we got to know each other better, we started dating and eventually got married. Scott has fulfilled his long-term dream of opening a cafe and is currently running it. However, when it comes to the DDS tasks like buy-in, office work, and accounting, he tends to rely on me just like with the taxes. Sighing, I headed towards the entrance when my mother-in-law approached me. Kristen, I feel like eating Chinese today. Can you take care of it? Understood. Could you please wash the rice instead? My mother-in-law frowned and said, why do I have to do it? I don't want to. You should come home early and take care of it. Also, Jenny and the kids will be back this weekend, so please prepare meals that the children can eat. What? Okay, understood. I reluctantly answered and left the scene. When Scott and I got married, I had hoped for a life with just the two of us. However, Scott had a different idea. Scott said, my father passed away and my sister is already married, so I'm worried about leaving mom alone. Since the house is big, I think it's good for us to live together. I had no choice but to agree. As a result, we started living in my mother-in-law's house with her. When we first started living with my mother-in-law, who is not good at household chores, the house was quite messy. After my father-in-law passed away, my mother-in-law had been living on her pension alone. That pension was mostly used for eating out, as she hated cooking. Scott sees household chores as a woman's job and shows no willingness to help. While continuing to work full-time, I am responsible for all the household chores. Jenny, my sister-in-law, also comes back often with her children even after getting married and leaving the house. When she comes over, the burden of household chores naturally doubles. This morning, when I heard that they would be coming over this weekend, I thought to myself not again. While thinking about this, the dreaded weekend arrived. Ideally, weekends away from work should be a time to rest, but when Jenny's children come asking to play, it's hard to say no. While taking care of the children all by myself, I also need to prepare meals. In the midst of this business, my sister-in-law made an unexpected statement. Kristen, I'm actually in the midst of getting a divorce and will be staying here with the children starting next month. Hope to get along with you. Uh, I hadn't heard about that. I answered in surprise. What's the matter? Do you have a problem with it? In response to my sister-in-law's dissatisfied reply, I hurriedly answered. No, it's not like that. Rather, that must have been hard, going through a divorce. When are you planning to move in? I asked. The sooner, the better, she answered. Knowing that my sister-in-law and her children would be coming back, I was initially bewildered but soon tried to think positively. 
Since my sister-in-law was a full-time housewife, I thought she would surely be a help with household chores. I hoped that my burden would be lessened. Although I am not particularly close to my sister-in-law, I was hopeful that my load would be lighter. However, that hope was quickly shattered. Perhaps due to being raised by my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law also did not help with any household chores, spending all day in front of the TV and eating snacks. She did not engage in any domestic or external work. I heard that a major factor behind her divorce was her neglect of household duties. I ended up doing the household chores instead of my sister-in-law as well as preparing meals for her children who are picky eaters. Additionally, preparing for kindergarten drop-offs also became my role. As time went on, I became busier with a new project at work. This led to more days requiring late night overtime and early morning starts. Upon returning home, the place was so messy that finding a spot to step on the floor was difficult, and I was utterly exhausted. The minute I would come back from work, my family would complain, isn't dinner ready yet? Why are you so late? As I struggled to manage household chores due to my busy schedule, I began receiving harsh comments from my mother and sister-in-law. My mother-in-law said, the laundry is piling up, don't cut corners just because you're busy with work. I replied, mother, I'm also busy with work. My sister-in-law criticized, look, how defiant she is towards her mother-in-law. Kristen is scary. And the meals are already made, Pua kids. Since you are also home all the time, could you perhaps help a little? I suggested. Then, my mother-in-law said, why would you make Jenny work? Besides, since Scott is a business owner, you shouldn't have to work. If you insist on working, you should at least manage household chores perfectly. I was speechless at her statement, but they looked at me as if it was obvious. That night, feeling at my limit, I talked to Scott. I said, even though I understand that work is busy, your mother and sister won't help at all. I'm at my limit. Scott retorted with a glare, are you trying to badmouth my mother and sister? I replied, it's not like that, but managing everything alone is impossible. I wish at least you would support me. I'm busy with the business. You might not understand since you're just an employee, but running a store is really hard. Don't make your work my burden. Still, as I was at a loss for words, Scott fell asleep then and there, leaving me to ponder alone again. However, shortly after, a good idea came to me. I quickly completed some online shopping, then took the rest of the day off. A few days later, various new household appliances were delivered to our home. I bought a drum washing machine, a cleaning robot, and kitchen appliances that cook automatically. Since there was no one to help with household chores, I wanted to reduce the burden as much as possible. Therefore, I decided to introduce the latest household appliances to make life more convenient. While the washing machine was being delivered, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law came over. Did you buy a new washing machine without asking? The old one still works. My mother-in-law approached me with a look of dissatisfaction. But this will make laundry much easier and faster, I replied cheerfully. However, my mother-in-law seemed inconvinced and continued, What is this? A cleaning robot and kitchen appliances, too? Kristen, come here. I was summoned to the living room where my mother-in-law and sister-in-law were sitting, and I was instructed to sit on the floor. Scott was also there, sitting confidently next to my mother-in-law. When I asked, What's the matter? My mother-in-law exclaimed loudly, What do you mean, what's the matter? Buying appliances to make it easier for you with the household money? What were you thinking? I'm not trying to be lazy. I just want to make household chores more efficient, I argued back. It's not about that, my mother-in-law criticized. People nowadays rely too much on machines for everything. Then, my sister-in-law joined in, exactly, Kristen, the appliances are still good, and though Scott is a business owner, you're wasting too much money. While my sister-in-law glared at me, Scott also seemed to nod in agreement next to her. I tried to argue back regarding that, but my sister-in-law didn't let me finish. 
always looking for the easy way out, and you can't even do household chores properly? What were you thinking? She criticized me. Despite wanting to fight back, I remained silent. Angered by my silence, my mother-in-law couldn't hold back anymore and blurted out, A lazy wife who neglects her chores like this should leave the house. Shocked by her words, I looked at my mother-in-law who was glaring at me, With mom and Scott here, we don't need you. Always looking so tired and spreading gloom like a parasite, my sister-in-law hurled harsh words at me too. Her words were in a tone of utter disdain. Wait, Scott, your mother and sister's way of speaking is too cruel. I've always. I sought Scott's support, but Scott scornfully replied, what mom and sister are saying is right. A wife who can't manage household chores is not needed. I stared at Scott in surprise, but he just sneered. I run a business and have the freedom to spend money. A wife who shops selfishly just to make her own life easier is not needed. I couldn't hide my astonishment and said, why would you say that? I'm currently seeing a young part-timer. She's attractive unlike you. Your presence is no longer needed. Pack your things and leave immediately, Scott coldly uttered those words. Stunned by his words, I was subjected to their criticism of being a failure of a wife. While listening to them, I looked down and clenched my fists in anger. After being used and then spoken to in such a manner, I'll show them. I'll make them regret this, I vowed to myself. Facing them with as little change in expression as possible, I said quietly, understood. I will leave. Finally got it, huh? We'll be better off without a useless wife, my mother-in-law said contemptuously. Ignoring her words, I took out something specific from the living room drawer. Scott, let's get divorced, I said, presenting him with a pre-filled divorce form. Exhausted, I had prepared the divorce form in advance as insurance. Huh, you had that prepared? Fine, I'll sign it. Don't blame me if you regret it. Scott said mockingly and signed the divorce form on the spot. That day, I packed all my belongings and moved to a short-stay apartment with the divorce form in hand. No one saw me off. Soon after, I submitted the divorce form to the city hall and rented an apartment in my name. Almost simultaneously with the divorce being finalized, I accepted a promotion opportunity I had previously turned down due to household responsibilities finally becoming a manager. Achieving career advance meant that I had long given up on further fueled my passion for work. An environment where no one hindered my tasks was my greatest joy. About a week after leaving the house, I started receiving calls from my former mother-in-law. However, I was busy and had no desire to speak with someone who had once looked down on me. Therefore, I consistently ignored her calls. A year passed, and one holiday while I was relaxing at home, I received another call from my former mother-in-law. This time, I decided to answer the phone and end it once and for all. Hello? Creston, you finally answered. You're terrible. How could you ignore my calls for a whole year? I could hear my mother-in-law's flustered voice from the other end. Do you need something? I responded indifferently. Well, first, how are you doing, Kristen? Are you doing well? My mother in last as if probing. I answered, how I am doing? I've rented an apartment for myself and I'm working hard. I've been promoted and my income has increased. I'm living a comfortable life. My former mother-in-law sounded a bit puzzled, but continued really. So, Kristen, would you consider coming back? Trying to persuade me to come back. I felt a chill at her sugary voice but asked, why now? Actually, we're in a tight financial situation. I said coldly with a smile, I see. I heard Scott's cafe is making less than $1,000 a month, and neither you nor your daughter are helping, right? You knew that. I was well aware that Scott's cafe was only making about $800 a month in profit since I was in charge of the accounting. Despite boasting about being a business owner, Scott had not been managing sales or administrative tasks properly and seemed unaware of the reality. I was handling the accounting and buy-in, so I'm well aware of the situation. That's 
You should have said something. I had no idea that you were a manager at a major company and financially providing for us. Yes, indeed. I was contributing over $3,000 a month to the household. That was the basis of your living. I was aware that Scott's Cafe was hardly making any profit. Therefore, a significant portion of my income went to providing living expenses for my in-laws. After I left, Scott must have realized for the first time that he couldn't make ends meet with just his cafe's income. My former mother-in-law pleaded earnestly, Kristen, please, I want you to come back. By the way, how is Scott's Cafe doing now? I ignored my former mother-in-law's request and asked out of curiosity. That place might not last till next month. The part-timer has also left. That's to be expected. With such careless management, it's impossible to maintain the store. Who would want to work under someone who is high in self-esteem but slacks off on important tasks? As I laughingly spoke, my former mother-in-law was left speechless on the other end of the phone. Shall we end this conversation? I'll be busy, from here on out. In a panicked tone, my former mother-in-law said, Wait, since you left, the house has become a complete mess. A mess? What do you mean? I inquired. According to my former mother-in-law, the in-law's house had become completely disorganized since there was no one to take care of the chores. With children around and no one to tidy up, the house was cluttered, no one was cooking, and they had to rely on eating out or buying meals, leading to increased food expenses. Additionally, the washing machine broke, and they had no funds to purchase a new one. My mother-in-law said, if only you had left those appliances behind. I counted, aren't those the appliances you called for being lazy? Why shouldn't I be able to take with me what I bought with my own money? I regret saying such things. But I never imagined that the house would change so much just because there was no one to do the chores. I confronted my former mother-in-law's angry demeanor. Why is it that three adults can't do household chores? What are my sister-in-law and Scott doing? My former mother-in-law spoke in a calmer voice. Scott has been unsettled since the part-timer left and the cafe's income stopped. Since then, he just stays at home and doesn't help with anything. Oh, so much for being a business owner who could freely spend money, I replied sarcastically. Moreover, Jenny hasn't made any move towards employment and has abandoned household duties. On top of that, she keeps asking me for pocket money for herself and her children. My pension isn't enough to cover all this. Huh, I was told by your daughter that you didn't need me because she was there, right? My sharp retort was met with more sweet talk from my former mother-in-law. Kristen, please. I can't make ends meet with just my pension. I have no intention of returning. Nevertheless, it seems like your children are quite the parasites, aren't they? I said, leaving my former mother-in-law without a rebuttal. As I was about to hang up, she pleaded even more. Kristen, we'll change our ways, so please come back and let's live happily like before. What? How can one live happily with an unwanted wife? I scoffed. After a moment of confusion, my former mother-in-law appealed further. I admit our mistakes. We're family, so let's help each other out. Without help, we won't be able to pay the property tax and we'll have to sell the house. I have no obligation or affection to extend my help. Please sort it out yourselves. With that, the unwanted wife will take her leave. Ignoring her screams, I turned off the phone and blocked my former mother-in-law's number. Relaxing at my clean home and enjoying a cup of coffee, a smile crossed my face. Three months later, when I happened to pass by the location of Scott's former cafe, it was already an empty lot. The store had indeed closed. Furthermore, a sold sign was up at my former in-law's house. From a conversation with a neighbor I met by chance, I learned they had hurriedly sold the house and were now living a difficult life in a small apartment, causing trouble with daily arguments and unpleasant smells and receiving numerous complaints from neighbors. It's so typical of them. Not supporting themselves and their household through honest work and independence. I looked at my former in-law's house with a detached gaze and left. 
Meanwhile, I continued to focus on my work. Recently, a sincere and earnest colleague asked me out, and we started dating with marriage in mind. Remarriage doesn't seem to be that far away. This time, I truly hope I'll find happiness.